full word Easter people. So I'm excited just to continue this series with you today. Uh, but can I give you a little bit, a little bit of, of, of a spoiler alert today? And th- this is kind of going to give you a little spoiler alert towards the, the, the last message in, in this series. But the spoiler alert is this. This series is really all about the power of the resurrection. Now, but I want to continue with that. It's about the power of the resurrection. That's what we were talking about last week. But it's truly all about the power of the resurrection in our daily lives. What is this thing, the resurrection that we celebrate this, this Easter Sunday? What does that mean to us personally? This is what this series is all about. Because I think through these people that we're talking about over these next few weeks, we're going to start seeing ourselves a little bit more in, 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 in each of these people that, that we highlight in Easter people. And so each week we're diving into a life that was really on a trajectory towards death. But somehow, some way, the redemptive power of Jesus came and gave them new life. And maybe that's, that right there is probably something that you, you may be able to relate to. That there was just something in your life that you were heading in the wrong direction, but there was something about the power of Jesus that just redeemed you and, and, and turned you back and, and, and gave you a new life. And that's what Easter is all about. You know, we're, we're about five weeks away from Easter. And so that's what it, it's all about. It's about the fact that death had no power over Jesus. And that's worth celebrating in, in, in itself. It's worth celebrating every day of our lives. And we can look at it this way. Did you wake up this morning? Yes, you did, because you're here this morning. And that's the power of, 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 uh, that's the power of showing that death was defeated in your life. The fact that you woke up this morning. Did, did, did you survive an illness? It could, it could have been just a cold. It could have been a flu. It could have, come on, mo- most of us, we, we contracted COVID over the past couple of years. The fact that you survived that illness, death was defeated. Come on, y- your life may have been headed in, in, in on a path of destruction, but somehow God decided to pull you out of that direction, take you in, a, in, in another direction. Death was defeated in your life. And so if you have your Bible today, we're, we're, we're going to explore. We're going to really pick up the story where we left off last week. So if you have your Bibles, if you don't, uh, we'll have the scriptures on, on the screen. But we're going to be in uh, the, the book of John today, chapter 20. And that's where we're going to bring. And I want to bring you a message today that I'm calling Right in the Middle. Right in the Middle is the name of, of this message today. So we're going to continue looking at people who were impacted by the resurrection as we realize that this is our story. Yeah, we're going to highlight people who who were there to to witness the the death and and the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus, but we got to realize this as well. This is our story. All all of this that we're we're talking about connects to us and and, and the foundation of our faith, what we believe. So, So when we hear about Mary Magdalene last week, and I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit more about Mary Magdalene last week and I hope that made you think a little bit different about who she is who who she was and how impactful she was with the 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 growth of of the kingdom throughout the region and I just mean there's there's just something great about Mary not not only Mary Magdalene but her girls who traveled with her her girls who who set who set things up for, for for the guys to continue the ministry if it wasn't for these ladies mary magdalene susanna joanna if it wasn't for these women i don't think that the, the ministry would have would have taken off the the, the way it has so it's, it's important to to highlight these women especially since it's women's history month as well uh that, that's that was you know a, a coincidence but timely one as well but today we're We're going to continue this story and take a look at what happened after Mary saw Jesus. As I mentioned last week, Mary had a front row seat to the to the resurrection of Jesus. She was the first one to see the resurrection Savior. So she had this front row seat. And and remember, I talked about us. You know, we clamor for the front row for anywhere else but in church. And I'm looking to today and no one took me up on my challenge last week of sitting in the front row. That's okay. That's okay. We're going to work on that. We're going to get there. We're going to have these front rows filled. People are going to clamor for the front row seats. <laughs> but in John, we're going to see Jesus. We're going to look at his closest friends. We're going to look at his boys. We're going to look at the, the disciples a, a little bit today. And we're going to highlight one disciple in particular in just a moment. But we're going to look at Jesus' closest friends and the impact that the resurrection had on them. 
And so if you go with me now to John chapter 20, we're going to start off by reading verses 19 through 23. And it says here, it says, On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for, were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Verse 22, it says, And when, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. This is the first time we hear about the Holy Spirit in, in, the, in, in, in Scripture. This was the gift that he was giving them. He said, he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. And lastly, in verse 23, it says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. And so I know what I'm about to say it may sound a little bit random right now after reading that scripture, but I promise you it's going to all come together j just fine. But I want to ask you this question. Have you ever had a middle seat on an airplane? Yeah. Come on. Soon, soon as soon as I said, ha, ha, yeah, oh, 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 let me tell you, Pastor Trey, I've, I've had that middle seat before. <laughs> and now look. Unless I'm flying with, with, my, with my wife or unless I'm flying with family, I don't want the middle seat. I do not want the window seat, I'm sorry, the, the, the middle seat because it's just the worst, y'all. <laughs> it's just the worst. If, if I'm flying on, on Southwest and you know how Southwest, you got to check in 24 hours before your flight takes off. I'm at home or I'm somewhere, if, I, if I'm driving, I don't care if I'm on Interstate 80. I'm going to pull over when I know, okay, my flight leaves at 4 o'clock tomorrow. It is 4 o'clock the day before. Let me pull over so I can check in on this flight. Because you are not to put me in Group C. <laughs> Come on. Y'all know what Group C is. What, what does Group C mean? You're going to get a window. Oh, you're going to get a middle seat. I, I, I better be high B. Anywhere in the A's, I'm, I'm good with. Or give me a high B. So I, I'm, I'm ready. It's 359. Okay, okay. Boom! Check in. 852. How did I get 852 and, I, and it's 4 o'clock on the dot? I like Southwest. Y'all be trying to get people for some reason. And, and so I, I need my group A or my group B at, at the worst because I need, a, I need an aisle seat or a window seat. And if I'm flying on another airline like, like Delta or American where they let you pick your seat, I don't care how much you charge me. Just, just let me pick my own seat. I, I, as long as it's not a middle seat. Just here, just take my money. It's $100 for, for the window seat. Here you go. I don't mind it because I, I, I just don't want that middle seat. And years ago, I remember, <laughs> I remember I, I, I had to take, um, it, it was a, a, I had to book a flight with, with short notice. And y'all, I got assigned the middle seat. <laughs> and there was, there was this man who was sitting, uh, who, who had the aisle seat and another woman who had the window seat. And I could tell y'all that they were husband and wife. And so, the, so here's the man in the aisle seat. I'm in the middle, and his wife had the window. So I'm trying to be, you know, the, the nice guy. Say, hey, I know you two are together, so would you like to sit together? Do you know they told me no? <laughs> the, the wife was like, oh, no, 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 it, it's fine. He likes the aisle. I like the window. I'm like, okay, this is weird. <laughs> Because you look at me, I'm, I'm 220 plus, and I'm in, I'm in this middle seat like this, and this is a four and a half hour flight, y'all. And I'm like, I, you mean I got to be like this for four and a half hours while the two of you pass donuts, pass snacks. Honey, do you want your snack right now? Yeah, you could give it to me. And I have to be the one. Here you go. <laughs> for four and a half hours, I, I, I got to deal with this. This is the weirdest thing. I felt like they're they're, they're a, a adopted black adult child or something like that. It was just it was just really weird. It was just it was just really weird. I'm like, you guys, you don't you don't want to sit together. So that means you really don't want to be around each other. But at the same time, you want to be around each other because you're, you're sharing snacks. At least you could offer me something. 
And so there was the most, what, one of the most miserable flights I ever took. And, and it, it was so miserable that because the husband loved the aisle, so you know, you, you can't lean your head this way in the aisle because then the, the, the flight attendants and their carts going to hit you in the head. So his head was on my shoulder, which made it even worse. So now I got this strange man's show, uh, head on my shoulder, and I'm just saying, okay, well, yeah, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> I, I was miserable. And so... I asked, <laughs> I asked them over and over again. You sure? If you, if you don't want, if you don't want to sit together because I'm sorry, y'all. This is this is getting getting a little weird. But ever since then, I just made an effort never, if if I can help it, never to sit in that middle seat again because no one loves the middle. Let's be honest. No, no one really loves the middle, especially if we're alone. No one loves being in the middle, and the reality, reality is that the middle seat is the one that we all dread. It doesn't matter if it's on a, in an airplane or in a car. You ever sat in the middle seat in the back seat of a car? And especially if it's an older car where you got that, got that hump in the middle. And so you're sitting on this hump, even though you, you're shorter than everybody else, for some reason now you're taller than everyone else because you're sitting on this hump. And, and, you, and you're digging for the seatbelt because nobody sits in the middle. So now you got to find the seatbelt. Where is the seatbelt? It's not one of the over the shoulder kind. So you got the little lap seatbelt. And you just feel like you're in a baby in a, in, a, in a baby car seat or something. It's just really weird. And then because it's a hump in the middle, one leg is over here. The other one is over here. And you got this hump going between your legs. It's just weird being in the middle. Come on. I know, I know y'all know what I'm, what I'm talking about here. And it just seems like... It's just being in that middle where we just where we just feel stuck because there's someone on each side of us that, 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 that is preventing us from being free. And so being in the middle, we often feel stuck. And that's true in a seat, but it's also true in the situations that we face in life where you've been in, in the middle and you just feel stuck. I just don't see no way out right now. I'm, I'm, I'm too far gone, but I'm not close enough to, to, to a resolution. I'm, I just feel stuck right here in, in the middle. And, and when you're trying to do something, the beginning, oh, the beginning is so exciting. When, when you say, oh, I want to start a new business. Yes. The, the, the beginning is, is so excited. You, you, you're just thinking, oh, this is going to be amazing. We're going to we're going to make so much money. It's going to be great. We're going to change the world. We're, we're, we're doing it. Yes, let's go. And then 10 years later, the business is launched and you're about to sell it for millions of dollars. You, you see the end in mind and the, the end is so much greater than, than the beginning. It just looks awesome. And you just look at yourself 10 years later. Look how great I am. Look at the success I, I've made for me and my family. But in the middle, in the middle is where all the stuff happens. In the middle is where we have to open the bank account, save money to launch the business. In the middle is where we have to apply for the business license. In the middle is where we have to register with the Secretary of State. In the middle is where we have the sleepless nights. In the middle is where we have the, the hiring and the firing. In the middle is where the blood and the sweats and the tears come from. It's in the middle that we feel like we're far from where we started but not close enough to the ending. And so in the middle is when it feels like it's most tempting to give up. See, this is where a lot of us are. When we're in the middle, it seems like, well, this is just not working. This relationship is it, it, just not working. So it's, it's, it may be just time to give up. This, this job situation that I'm on, I know I've been here for five years and I want my goal was to stay here for 10. It's just not working out for me. It's time to, to give up. I've been trying to launch this business. I've been trying to go back to school. I've been trying to make, make my dreams come true for me and my family, but it just doesn't seem like it's not happening for me, God. So maybe it's time for me to give up because I'm stuck right here in the middle. And I want to show you an example of this in the Bible, in the Bible where there were some people who were stuck in the middle and they were tempted to give up. And we can find this in the book of Nehemiah. In the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah told the people, look, y'all, in 52 days, we're going to build a wall. And it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. I, I, I kind of, I, I can feel Nehemiah in his Donald Trump voice. We're going to build a wall. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Come on, that's just what I hear in my head when he's talking about building this wall. It's going to be the most fabulous wall that you've ever seen. 
But when we look at what we're told in Nehemiah in chapter 4, verse 6, sounds like people are starting to get stuck in the middle a little bit. In Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6, it says this. Nehemiah says, so we built the wall. And all the wall was joined together. Here's the key part. To only half its height. For the people had a mind to work. So the whole wall was now, they, they, they built the entire perimeter of the, mall, uh, of the wall. They knew how far it would go to the east, to the west, how far it should go to surround the entire city of Jerusalem. They had built that much to go at least waist high, but this was supposed to be a tall wall. This was supposed to be a wall of protection. So they still had a ways to go. And so notice in, 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 verse, in verse 10 what, what it said just a few verses later. In verse 10 it says, in Judah it was said, the strength of those who bear the burdens is failing. Those who were building the wall, their strength was failing. I, 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 they saying, I, we don't know if they're going to finish this thing. He says the, the burden is failing. That there's too much rubble by ourselves. We will not be able to rebuild this wall. What happened? What happened, Nehemiah? What, what happened? I, I like to think it, it's the same thing that Michael Jackson once said in a song. They got stuck in the middle. And the pain is thunder. Come on, I know y'all know the song. Mama say, Mama sa, Mumaku sa. <laughs> they were stuck in the middle. And they went from, they went from th this best idea that they ever had. Building this wall, rebuilding the wall to protect the holy city. This is the best idea ever. They went from that point to, well, hmm, maybe we were in over our heads. This, this, is, this is too much to bear. I, we, we, we thought we had the skills to do this. We thought we could, we, we, we could put this thing together. Come on, we're stuck in the middle right now, and it just don't seem like it's, it's going to work out for us. Maybe we should give up. Maybe we were better off without a wall. So they had the best intentions. And maybe you had the best intentions in your life. Come on, maybe you had the best intentions. We're about to hit spring and spring cleaning is about to happen. Maybe you got the best intentions to finally clean out your garage. <laughs> right here. You got the best intentions to clean out your garage. So what you're going to do, you're going to pull out all that stuff. Because right now only one car is fitting in the garage, even though you got two cars. And one car, and come on, it's mostly the, the husbands. We go outside and we freeze and for 10 minutes warming up our car right now. So you only can fit one car right now. So what are you going to do? You're going to pull everything out into the driveway. This is the day we're going to clean this garage. And you start pulling things out. Oh, we don't need that no more. That goes in the trash. We don't need this anymore. We don't need that no more. But somehow in the middle... <laughs> You've been out there about three or four hours now. The kids, you know, they, they, they got tired. They're not helping you no more. You, you, your spouse, the spouse, they went inside either to watch the game or to watch, you know, some, some ratchet TV show. <laughs> but, but you don't have any help anymore. And so you're like, well, you know what? I'm stuck in the middle. So maybe I should just give up and we'll try again next year. So you push everything right back into the garage. It, ne it never got clean. It may be stacked a little neat neater, but you sure enough can't fit another car in there. You got stuck in the middle because it's in the middle that our fears, our worries, our stresses, and our anxieties begin to just overtake us. In the middle is it, it, just not a pleasant place to be. Now going back to our, our main text, <clears throat> our main text, John chapter 20. Verse 19 said the disciples were all in one room with the doors locked. They were afraid. They were afraid that they were going to be next. They were stuck in the middle. See, the beginning for the disciples was great. The beginning was amazing. The beginning, they were called by Jesus himself to, 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 to do ministry. Peter what was a fisherman. You mean I don't have to fish no more? I can just follow you and life is going to be great? I'm all in. See, this was the beginning. But, and the, the end of the story that they envisioned in their mind, it was just as beautiful. Millions of people will know the gospel. Millions of people will come to Jesus. We'll heal millions of, of people in, in, in our lifetime. Yes, I'm all in for this. this the, the ending is, is, is even greater than the beginning, but then nothing prepared, prepared them for the middle. 
Nothing prepared them for the middle because in some ways the disciples had a lot in common with some of us, whether we're here in the room or some of us who may be even watching online. And when I say this, those of you who may be watching online or maybe watching this at a later time on our app, this is not picking at you, but it's also truth in this as well. Because some of you online, maybe some of you in the room today, you used to be fully engaged with your church, whether it's here at Life Words Church or another church. You used to serve on the, on the teams. You, you, you built relationships with, with your pastors. You, you, you built relationships with, with your church family. You did, you did life together, but then March 2020 happened. March 2020 happened, and you haven't been the same. Come on, I know someone on, on, online know, knows what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm talking about because I, I know this is true because if I had a seat for every person who never came back to, to Life Words Church but before the, the, the pandemic or, or those who have told me, Pastor Trey, I'm just not ready to come back yet. I just, I just, I just cannot trust that, you know, that, that this pandemic is over, so I'm not ready to come back. If I had a seat for everyone who has told me this, we would need three services to accommodate everyone. And like I said, I'm not criticizing anyone because I understand people have their reasons. But at the same time, you're stuck in an unexpected middle. Because now, now the online services ha have become not just, it's no longer a convenience. Now it's become a crutch. Because it's easier, especially on a day like today, when it's daylight savings and, and I lost an hour of sleep, it's easier for me to just to pick up my tablet and just go to lifewordschurch.com or, or you name the church here.com or YouTube or, or Facebook and just scroll down my timeline. I'm going to find a service and I can just stay right here in the middle. Mm -hmm. Because it's, I've been here in the middle for so long that now the middle has gotten comfortable. That's how the disciples felt life for his family. They were afraid. And they were locked up in this room. They were locked up in a room in, in fear that they would be next. They, they, they just witnessed what happened to Jesus three days ago. And they were fearful that they would be next. So right here in the middle, it, it, it may not be completely comfortable, but, but it, 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 it's low risk if I stay locked up. It's low risk if I stay isolated. And that's what happened to the disciples. They got afraid. They locked themselves up. But don't you realize, we talked about this last week, Mary Magdalene, she was still out serving. While the disciples were locked up in a room, Mary Magdalene, who was, who was there to witness every miracle that Jesus performed, she, she was the logistics coordinator of this ministry. She's still out serving. Because it said that on that morning, she went to the tomb to anoint the body. And she was hoping that someone would, would be there to roll the tomb away, to roll the stone away so that they can access the grave. So she's still out serving. But here are the guys hiding, locked away in, in, in a room for fear of their lives. And I also think it's, 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 it's really interesting that in verse 24, it says, it says it was minus Thomas. And that, that, that's the, the one we, we're, we're going to focus on today. This is our Easter person for the day, Thomas. And in John chapter 20, verse 24, it says, Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. Jesus came into this room. He showed up and the disciples were in the middle. They were stuck in the middle of this moment of fear, stuck in the middle, feeling, just feeling completely stuck and helpless. They felt like they couldn't get out of the, the rut that they, they were in. And here comes Jesus. And so they, they, they huddled up, and, and when he appeared, right in the middle of their circumstances, he didn't take no action. He didn't touch them. He didn't do, do any, any miraculous signs. He just spoke words to them and said, peace be unto you. Because Jesus knew at that moment that they were in, in fear for their lives, that nothing that he could have done to touch them would, 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 would really heal them. What they needed right now was peace and comfort. They needed reassurance that, hey, I know you feel stuck right now. I know the middle is, is, is sometimes a hard place to be, but I want to assure you that there's peace on the other side of being in the middle. I just need you to keep going forward. And so that's, that's all that Jesus said. He said, peace 
be unto you. And I want to give you today's first key point. His peace unlocks. His presence, I'm sorry. His presence unlocks his peace. You want peace? Seek the presence of Jesus. You, 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 want, you want comfort? Seek the presence of Jesus. You see, in this moment, the disciples, they didn't, they didn't need anything. They didn't need food. They, 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 they didn't need a healing or anything, but they needed peace in their lives. Because when you're stuck in the middle and you're stressed out, high levels of anxiety, so many crazy thoughts are going through our heads. Oh, 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 should we, should we surrender? Should we give up? Should we end our own lives? So many thoughts happen in the middle. So Jesus knew at this moment, my brothers, you need peace. You need comfort. So comfort was the outcome for them, but our friend Thomas missed out. And, and, and the, Bible, the Bible doesn't tell us exactly where Thomas was at, at the time, but can you imagine what he was going through? He, 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 was, he was stuck in the middle, so he, 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 he probably did what, what, what we talked about last week. He overanalyzed his failures. He, he was probably walking alone in, in the wilderness, just overanalyzing everything that had happened over the past three days. And he probably b blamed himself a little bit. Well, well, if I protected Jesus a little bit more, he probably wouldn't have been captured. If, if, if I would have did this, if I would have, if I would have spoke up, maybe they would, they would have took me instead of the Savior. I, there, there was more that I, I could have done. So I blame myself. And the pain probably got so intense that he isolated himself. You ever been in pain so much that all you just want to do, just, just get into bed, pull the covers over your head and just not talk to anybody because what you're dealing with. Come on, we've all been there. But you just don't want to talk to anybody. You just don't want to deal with anybody. You, you isolate yourself. And this was probably Thomas's situation that he was isolating himself because I blame myself for the death. I could have done more. I should have done more. I should have said something, but I didn't. And so now I need to isolate myself because I'm feeling so much pain. I'm feeling so much guilt. I'm feeling so much anxiety and, and stress right now. So Thomas disconnected himself from the others. But I want to let you know, Life Words family, that isolation and disconnection results in us being further from Jesus. Your, 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 your times of isolation, I don't want to deal with nobody. I, 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 just, I just want to be left, left alone. Let me remind you that God, from the beginning, his order, his design was for us to be in relationship with him and with one another. He, he, he started this by, by, by telling Adam, look, I'm going to send you a helper because you're, you, you weren't meant to do this thing called life alone. So he sent him even. Then we hear the word helper again in the New Testament where, where Jesus said, I'm going to leave you a helper in the Holy Spirit. This is God saying, look, you are meant to be in isolation. You were meant for a relationship. You were meant to do life together, not alone. But there is somebody who needs to pray for you when you're going through a situation. Maybe you need to pray for someone else when they're going through a situation. But you were never meant to do this thing alone. I know it hurts. I, I know you're stressed out. I, I, know, I know you're wondering how the ends will meet. I know you're, you're wondering when is the blessing that I've been praying for? When is going to happen? Well, maybe you need somebody to be praying with you instead of you praying by yourself. People need people. We were designed to be in relationship together. And I want you guys to remember, remember what it says in Matthew 18, 20. The word says for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Do you get it, Thomas? Do you get it, Life Words family? You have to remind yourself that if I want to feel the presence of, of Jesus through the Holy Spirit in my life, I got to come out of isolation. Because I, I will never fully experience the presence of, of the Holy Spirit as long as I remain in isolation. I, I, I need the, the two or three gathered with me. So when, when people text me today and say that we're going to miss out today, maybe they overslept or maybe it was because of the weather or maybe because they were sick. The first thing I thought about is as long as there are two or three gathered in the name of Jesus, I know he will be in the midst today. 
I will not stay in isolation. I, I cannot be in isolation. God's plan from the very beginning was for us to be in relationship together. And so we talk about Thomas and, and who he was and who he was at that moment. But I want, to, I want to start sharing with you in just a moment of who Thomas was at the beginning. Before he got stuck in the middle. And, 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 and the book of John, we're going to go down a couple of verses to, to verse 25. Chapter 20, verse, verse 25, it says, So the other disciples told him, Thomas, we have seen the Lord. I don't know where you were at the time, but Thomas, we've we, we seen him. He, he's alive. It says, but he said to them, unless I see his hands for myself, <laughs> unless, I see, uh, unless I see his hands, the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark uh, uh, of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe you. Come on, Thomas, you, you, you're just going deeper and deeper in, in, in this place of isolation. You're going deeper and deeper being stuck in the middle because now, because of his, he, he was in so much pain, so much hurt, now it, 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 it's converted from just being in pain and being isolated and, and, and disconnected from the brotherhood that now he's doubting everything. Hence his nickname, Doubting Thomas. It, it's, it's because of the isolation. It's because of the pain and the stress. And it's because he decided to, I, 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 I don't want to be around anyone right now, that now he's doubting everything. Everything that he once believed in. Come on. Some of us have, have been there before. That everything that you once believed in. Oh, God, I know you're going to do this for me. God, I, you, you blessed me with this house. I know you're going to do even more. But some, and all of a sudden, the roof starts leaking. Or the car it starts to fail after a couple years. Lord, I, th I thought you blessed me with this house, but I can't afford a new roof. Lord, I thought you blessed me with this car, but I can't afford this new transmission. We start doubting everything that we believe God for because we're stuck in the middle. And doubting is evidence that there's a lot, lack of faith. Doubting is evidence that there's a lack of faith. In just three days, Thomas forgot all about the thing, uh, how, how things started for him and how excited he was to commit to a life following Jesus. Most of us know about Do Thomas the doubter. But before that, he was arguably the most courageous of all the disciples. Did you know that? But before we, we, we knew doubting Thomas, he was actually courageous Thomas. I want, to show, I want to prove it to you in scripture. In John chapter 11, we're going to go back a couple chapters to, verse, uh, to, to chapter 11, verse 14 through 16. It says, then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there. Jesus said, I, I, I'm glad I wasn't there because I want to show you something. He said, I'm glad I wasn't there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. In verse 16, it says, so Thomas called the twin. Thank you. Called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. See, see Thomas knew that, that because Lazarus died in, in, in a city called Bethany which was in Judea, and returning to Judea meant that it, there was a threat that they would be stoned or, or beheaded by, by, by the Jews. And so all the other disciples like, Jesus, you want to go to Bethany, right? I don't know about that. But here is, here is Thomas saying, look, let's go. Let's roll. If, if, if we die, we die. But I'm with you, Jesus. Thomas, the, the one that, that we now know as the doubter, was the most courageous saying, let's go. We have things to do. We have a gospel to spread to many. If this is what it takes to spread the gospel, let's do it. And so Thomas was the only one to speak up, the only one to say it loud. Jesus, let's roll. Let's go. So you see, that's how things began for Thomas. But now we see Thomas stuck in the middle, stuck in the middle. And if we go back to chapter 20, the next verse that we, after we read verse 25, if you read the next verse, verse 26, it says eight days later. <laughs> so a whole week has passed and Thomas is still stuck in the middle. Can you imagine for a whole week, you're feeling so much pain, you're feeling so much loss, you're feeling so much isolation, and now you're doubtful for an entire week. And it says, so eight days later, his disciples were inside again not only Thomas but now the rest of the disciples they're still hiding it's been a week y'all 
You're still isolated. You still lock the doors behind you. You, You're still afraid. It's been a week already. And Thomas was with them this time. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, once again, peace be with you. Verse 27, then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And verse 28, Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you've seen me? (laughs) Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. So come on, Thomas, why why are you worshiping me now? Is it because that that you needed the proof? Is is it because now now, now the proof is in the pudding? You you have physical evidence? That's not faith, Thomas. Is it because you see me or is it because you believe in me? So I want to conclude by asking you the question, Life Force family. When you're stuck in the middle and you're finally brought out of the middle, will you praise God because you've seen him or because you believed in him from the beginning? Don't lose faith just because you're in the middle. Just because it's uncomfortable sitting here in the middle and waiting for an opportunity to be freed from the middle Will you trust them while you're in the middle? Don't doubt. Don't be like Thomas in doubt. Don't, don't be unassured of, 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 of what God is doing in your life. Because even though you're stuck in the middle, there's strength in the middle. For when, for when it's time to receive that, that blessing, when it's time to receive that increase, the scripture says that God has, has so many blessings for you that there's not enough room for you to receive it. That there's so much for you, so much that he wants to pour out on you that your, your hands cannot contain it. So if God gave you everything that you asked for right here, right now, you don't have the strength to hold it. But it's just like going to the gym. You may go to the gym on day one and you could barely lift 20 pounds. But if you stay there, if you stay in the hard times, if you stay in the middle long enough, now all of a sudden 25 pounds is nothing for you and you can go up to 50. And all of a sudden a little bit longer in the middle, 50 pounds is nothing for you, you can go to 100. Thomas, you need to stay here in the middle so you you can be strengthened to continue the gospel. What will you do when you're stuck in the middle life for his family? What will you do when you can't see your way out of a situation? Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen me yet, but yet they still believe. So Thomas, Jesus is basically saying, Thomas, I'm not talking to you right now. Because you had had to see me in in order to to believe. But I'm talking about those who have yet to see me. Those who have yet to to, to see the nails, the the, the scars on on my hands and in my side. Those people who who have yet to see me but still believe. Those who are still locked into the faith. Those are the ones I'm calling blessed right now. That's who I'm talking about. So Life Force family, will you trust them in the dark times? Will Will you trust them when you can't see him moving? Will you trust him in the dark where you, where you can't even see what the next step is? Will you trust him? Jesus showed up as they were gathering to bring peace and release them from the middle. Because now the real work was about to begin. He said, I'm giving you some marching orders. And the real work is about to begin. You, th- you, you thought we were doing some, some, some work for, for over these past three years? that we were doing ministry, that's nothing for what I'm about to call you to do now. So I need you to come out, come out of the middle. You've been here long enough because now it's time to get to work. He was about to send them out to build his church. See, this was, this was more than just, just going and, 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 and speaking to the multitudes and, and, and showing a few, a few signs and, and wonders of, of, about the power of Jesus. But now that he's gone, he's like, the power that I had now is in you. And so go build the church. Go, go, go make it, go make it great. So let's not forget, as I close with this, our, our, our last key point. There's not just peace in the gathering. Where the disciples were hidden, basically quarantined. Come on. They were isolated. There's not just peace. Jesus doesn't just show up in those places to provide us peace. 
but there's also peace for the scattering because that's what they were about to get into. Every one of them was about to go in a different direction to bring this gospel to every corner of the world. And Jesus was going to say, the peace that I give to you, I'm leaving with you through the gift of the Holy Spirit. So no matter where you go, no matter what you face, no matter what you encounter, my spirit is going to be with you. It's going to go before you. It's going to go with you. It's going to be behind you. Go in peace. That's what it means to go in peace. Knowing that the Holy Spirit has gone before you, knowing that the Holy Spirit is working things out for you, go to every end of this earth, preaching the gospel, spreading the good news, healing, delivering, doing all that I done because now the power is in you. Come on. He's not just talking to Thomas now. He's talking to us right now in 2023. The power that was in me 2000 years ago is now in you. Go do it. There is peace. In the scattering. Yeah. What's that gift that God has given you? Mm-hmm. Maybe, it's not, maybe it's not the gift of preaching. Maybe it's not the gift of laying hands or healing. But he's placed a gift in you that can be used to build his kingdom. Go do that. Mm-hmm. Because his spirit has already gone for, before you working things out for your favor. See, see we got to see how all these scriptures that we recite, how, how, they, how they all tie in hand in hand. See, we talk about Jesus saying, go preach the gospel to, to all the nations. And then later in, in Romans, the, the one that we love the most, where it, it, talked about, where it, it talks about God has already gone before us. And, 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 and those who are called according to his purpose, things are going to work out for their favor. So it all ties hand in hand. Go because it's already worked out for you. The game is already fixed in your favor. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to sit in the middle wondering and doubting and being stressed out. So while you're in the middle, while you're in the middle seat on that airplane, mm-hmm. know that you're going to land. Mm-hmm. You see, when I was stuck in that middle seat, I couldn't see the landing. All I could see was four hours being miserable. And Jesus is trying to tell us there's a time for landing. Mm-hmm. There's a time for freedom. There's a time when I, I, I'll be able to stretch my arms out again. Come on, there, there's a time when I'll feel some peace in my life again. There's a time when I'll feel some comfort again. There's some times where I will feel the blessings of God. I don't have to see it. I just have to believe that the time is coming. So I want to encourage you, Life Force family. Know beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I know we've been going through some hard times. I know we've been going through some situations. Look, th- th- this launching a, a new church, you know, we're, we're just a, a, little, a little over three years old. It, it, it's tough. There's, there's some ebbs and flows. There's some ups and downs. This, this has been a, an, an emotional roller coaster. And, and just months before we launched, we, we, we lost our son at the age, at, at the age of 21. So, so there's been a lot to deal with with launching this church. And in the middle, we could just say, you know what? I can't do this. In the middle, I, 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 I can say, you know what? It's just not working out for me. I, I, I'm better off just sitting in the crowd with everyone else. I, 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 I don't want to be in the middle any longer. That's because the pain of where I am can sometimes cloud our vision of where God is trying to take you. Don't let your pain cloud your vision. I didn't say let, let your, don't let the pain cloud your eyesight. Your eyesight is the physical. Your vision is the spiritual. Don't let your pain, your current pain, which is a temporary situation, don't let that pain cloud where God is trying to take you. His thoughts are so much higher than ours. His ways are higher than ours. His good and perfect will always supersedes our human emotions. There's not just peace in this gathering, but there's peace in the scattering. There's peace when we leave this place. There's peace when we go on our job, go go back to our jobs tomorrow. There's peace when we encounter that friend or that relationship that has been broken for some time. There's peace in it all. 